Now, friends, as we come to this fifth chapter, we're still in this first section of 2 Corinthians in the comfort of God. Now we have here God's comfort in the ministry of martyrdom for Christ. We've seen God's comfort in the glorious ministry of Christ in chapter 3. And what a wonderful place it is that today it's an unveiled Christ that we declare. And then we have God's comfort in the ministry of suffering for Christ, chapter 4. Now we have God's comfort in the ministry of martyrdom for Christ. And we want to look at that. Now I want to read verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle... Word is solved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now, I want you to notice what Paul is saying here. He's not saying we hope that we have an earthly house or we expect to have an earthly house or even we believe that we have an earthly house. Do you notice the way that he put it here? He says, we know that we have. And believe me, friends, that is a pretty big no. That is a no. That means that he knows by experience. He knows because of the fact the Spirit of God has made it real to him. Now he says we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, and the word tabernacle is skene, It actually means tent. That was the word, by the way, used for the tabernacle in the Septuagint translation of the Old Testament. The Old Testament tabernacle, Mosaic tabernacle, was called a skene, a tabernacle. It's a flimsy sort of thing. Now, what he's saying here is something that is quite wonderful. This verse has always been a big question mark to me. I have never been too dogmatic about the interpretation of it, and I may not be today, but I'm now come to the conviction that what he's talking about here is not a temporary body. I've always suggested that as a possibility, that if this earthly house of this tabernacle and this tent that we live in, and that means this body of ours, that if this dissolves, we have a building of God, a house not made with hand. And then I thought uh, for many years that it could be that he'd have sort of a temporary. You know, you take your car into the garage to be worked on, and they let you have a loaner. You drive that around. Well, the Lord, until he gives us our new bodies... Well, he's going to give us a temporary one. I never liked that, but that seemed to be what he was saying. But I want you to notice that that's not true. What Paul is talking about here is one that is eternal in the heavens. This is not temporary. He's talking about that new body that we're going to get. Now, let's look at this for just a moment, because very frankly, friends, this is a very important section of the Word of God. The thing that is all important and something that we need to have clearly fixed in our minds and in our hearts, that there is an outward man and an inward man. Paul talked about that in this last chapter, by the way, that our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And a great many people misunderstand that. I had a letter from a Man, he says the Bible is filled with contradictions, and he said, I can prove it because he says, I get so tired hearing you say that so-and-so has gone to be with the Lord, and then you talk about the body is going to be raised or the person is going to be raised from the dead down here. And he says, now that's a contradiction. Well, you see, this man has missed the entire point that it's the body that's put in the grave But the individual, the real person, has gone to be with Christ if that individual is a believer. You see, the things that are seen, they're temporal. You say, you've seen me, or maybe you haven't. Now, many listeners just make a trip when I'm speaking in certain sections. In fact, a 
family told me up in Ohio, well, they said, you know, we made a trip here and they drove 50 miles to just see how you look. Do you want to know something? They didn't see me. <laughs> they saw the house I live in, this old tent I live in. I want to be very frank with you. This tent I live in is becoming a very weak tent. It's flapping around. It's becoming very weak. The picture that I suggested to you was back in Ecclesiastes, and I hope that sometimes you might look at that. And we'll be coming to it one of these days, and the picture that's given our old age is really something. It says, the keepers of the house shall tremble. This old house of mine. Who are the keepers? Well, these knees of mine. They're beginning to tremble. And the strong man shall bow themselves. The strong men. Well, who are those? Oh, these are the shoulders. They're beginning. My wife says to me every now and then, she says, oh, stand up straight. Well, I don't stand up straight. And then it goes on to say, the grinders shall cease. <laughs> Your teeth are going to fall out, friends, because they're few. And they that look out of the windows be darkened. And I'm now wearing trifocals. Remember when I first put on glasses? No focal about it at all, just glasses. But now it's trifocal. May I say to you, the sound of the grinding is low. And for some men and women, you know, the voice becomes very low, becomes very squeaky. That's old age. That's the thing that's taking place in all of us. Now, this is the outward man, you see. But there is an inward man. And that inward man is spiritual. And it's difficult for us to understand that. Now, God is a person. But God is not physical or material. God's a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, the Lord Jesus said. And the psalmist says... He maketh his angels spirit. Psalm 104, 4. And I hear people say today, I don't like getting old. <laughs> oh, my friend, I'm enjoying it. In fact, the matter is, I'm enjoying retiring from a church because I'm doing now what I want to do. And it's wonderful to do that. My doctor told me, he says, I want you to do what you want to do. And when my wife tells me to do something, I say, look, my doctor tells me to do what I want to do. Now, I don't want to do what you want me to do, but I can't get her to buy that package all the time. Now, may I say to you, it's wonderful. Every passing year now is bringing me closer, you know, to him. And it's quite wonderful. And then I'm going to see him someday. I'm going to see the face of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to see him, the one who loved me and gave himself for me. And I want to tell you, friends, I rejoice, and I'll be very frank with you, I don't have as much conflict today with the world of flesh and the devil as I used to have. I think they've given up on me. And may I say to you, it's wonderful. This old house is getting old. <laughs> as someone asked President Adams years ago, says, how do you feel? Oh, he says, I feel fine. But this old house that I live in, it's really getting feeble, the shingles coming out on top, and the foundation seems to be coming out from underneath. But my friend, we have a house eternal in the heavens. We got one up yonder, that body that he's going to give us someday, this old body, sown a natural body, it's going to be 